Okay, hello. What you're seeing on the desk right now is a Sylvania TV. Now, this one, just like the yellows, I also got used. Again, none of these TVs that I'm getting are brand new, but... This one we got used, so... Anyway, so I'm gonna give you a little story on it and whatnot, and... Probably gonna... See, so... Now, this TV isn't this particular TV used in this part, but a couple of years ago, one of my friends had, like, the exact same TV. Like, same brand, same everything. And this is... And they said that, oh, it was just switching inputs while I was using it, so it was having issues. When I went to test it, it was working just fine, so I think he was just compl the kid was just complaining because this was like one of my friends and he was younger at the time. I think he was just complaining because he wanted a bail TV in his room. <laughs> which, they had the TV, which, when, when this happened, they, they moved the TV from the guest room into his room. <laughs> but, honestly, they still have the remote control and I'm probably going to take that because I have the Sylvania TV, the Sylvania, and I have no remote to it, so... But anyway, on to the how I, how I got this TV. So I got it from a resale store. I don't remember the name. It was not Goodwill. Goodwill was cool. I got a small LG, the Vizio, the AOC, which I no longer have. Uh, the Sharp. Those are the ones I got from Goodwill stores. This one I got from a different one. So anyway, we're well, going to have a little look at it. So, it's going to move a little bit closer to you. To the TV here, not to you. And, going to look at the buttons down here. Now, this one has buttons up right down here. You can kind of obviously see them. So you have the volume, the menu slash setup, the channel, which actually controls the input. And the power button. So, obviously, it's not going to do anything right now, controlling the fact that I don't actually have it plugged in, but... <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to show you that. And then... Also, got a little sticker of claims. <laughs> so... It's probably a thing where they had it in the store, obviously. They, had, they put the stickers on there just to show people what they actually have. <laughs> but, being that this says HDTV, this one does, in fact, has a, have a digital ATSC tool. Which is actually a good thing, unlike the Samsung that I just showed you guys that does not. <laughs> Which I find that really dumb. I'm like, why does Sam why does this high end TV company put no digital tuto on their TV for 2006, and an off brand Scott does that? <laughs> like that does like no sense to me whatsoever. And I think Vizio has digital tutos from back in the day. But then again, Vizio's even double because more recently, they completely took away the Tudos out of their TVs. So, I'm kind of worried about calling a bit, like, a Vizio for that time period a TV. Because of the fact that it might, ha not, might not have a Tudor, so it might not even be a TV, it might just be a giant monitor. <laughs> but, I don't know what Vizio was up to, but they did that for some dumb reason. However, in all the 2018 models, I believe, I think it was 2017 that did that, I'm not quite sure. All the 2018 models have two dots in them. <laughs> I think that Vizio learned for a mistake and they instantly put it back in two dots and people will complain that they say that Vizio, when you're buying a Vizio, we're not buying a TV, they're buying a model. <laughs> but anyway, so we're going to look uh, on this TV a little bit. Now, on this one, actually, side inputs, which I'm actually going to show you, this TV is actually so tiny. <laughs> but okay, so on the side, we have the service turbo, which this is where the USB port is. Which I also don't know if it also has power or not. But I have to see later on. And then we have HDMI 2 in, which for a TV this small has two HDMI ports. Why does the Scott and Samsung only have one, even though those are older? The Vizio that is, that is in regards from 2007 has two. So why can't, why can't Samsung do that with the TV from the year before? <laughs> And then have the S video, and then we have the the AV connections, 
And then we also have a headphone out, aka 3.5 millimeter, I meant audio out. Mm -hmm. Which most TVs have those. Like most of the smaller TVs have those. Now let's go on to the back side. So, before you look at a model number, which I'm showing you, oh, I see. I want to show you the inputs. So, have the VGA, obviously, which, see the audio is audio in for right here. And then we, and now what do we have? Well, this right here is actually not AV connections. In fact, this is for HDMI 1 in if you're using DVI, which this is HDMI right here, HDMI 1. This is for if you're using DVI, DVI or a signal or a separate signal processing part for the HDMI. So this is audio in. This is not audio out. This is audio out, which is coaxial. I don't confuse it, isn't it? <laughs> but. But then we have the component inputs, which for the component in, these are the audio ports. I don't confuse them because I, I, they, they did like this for some reason. I don't understand what is with this TV. And then of course we have the antenna jack, which of course is DTV capable. And then you're going to look on the model book here. So this is an LC195SLX. Okay, this is a pretty common ball, and I got this for ten dollars. If you can kind of see, like right down here, ten dollars I got it for. It was a really cheap TV. They had another nineteen, so it was like fifty dollars. I was like, and they thought it was brand new. I was like, that's not brand new. That's that's the, that, that's older than this one. <laughs> but it had other parts. So, but this is from twenty ten. So this one is approximately twelve and a half years old. So, anyway, we are going to go ahead and turn it on in just a sec here. Let me just turn it around completely. And being that this TV is so lightweight, obviously you can just like see right here. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm going to put it a little bit closer to the this side here. Okay. So now, while they're being so far away from the thing, we are going to do it here. Okay, so let me just plug it in. I'll go ahead and look through it a little bit. Okay. And no, it's not on. It just puts the green light on as soon as like, you do it. Okay. So now we are going to turn it on. Now keep in mind, I have no remote controls for this, so I will be able to do it that way. I have to just do it this way, I guess. For now, until I get that remote, but... See, it says digital television. Now, right now, I have it on PC inputs, since that's what I'm last using it on, but... Go change your HDMI 1, since that's probably what I'm going to use it on, but we can at least cycle through your inputs here. So, component, video, and we have analog channels, and then back onto HDMI 1. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look through the menu settings. So, we have patrol mode, obviously. I, of course, as soon as I got this, like all the other ones, I changed every single one of the settings. <laughs> so... We pretty much go past that. We have sound, which uh, we can go over to equalizer, which obviously I have not changed that because I don't feel like I need to do that. <laughs> I don't feel like sound size needs to be really changed. Unless, of course, you have some vibe leveling or some stupid surround mode on that I really hate. <laughs> we have channel, which you can obviously do an all scan, but, <laughs> but obviously if I did this, then it would, of course, mess up everything. <laughs> so obviously, see, it's right there. <laughs> And we go down one, and we have, like, detail. Now, this is, like, all the yellow options. So, we have close capture, child lock, PC settings, energy saving mode, location, and code software info. What we are going to do is we're going to go down to code software info. So, this is just kind of, like, the phone whale that is on here. And you want to go on language. We have, obviously, three main languages that you would use if you have a TV like this. These are the three most common languages. TV manufacturers really don't put, like, 5,000 languages on them. <laughs> but, anyway. We are going to look at the... Connect the Roku up. 
We're going to see kind of what she looks like on here. So, right now, as you can see, the red is on here. Now we are going to just pull up the color ball pad I've been using this whole time. I don't know. Look, it was kind of a straight spot. But if, if it was a straight spot, that was actually made a story of a control command. So. Okay. Okay. So. What we're going to do is we're going to do the color ball uh, panel on here. So. Okay. So we're going to do the color ball panel on this. Now. It's actually a little stranger with me, but stay with me a little bit here. Okay. Top light. Now. Uh, I want you to look at some. So we're going to look at, again, is the brightness on here. And we're going to look at the color accuracy and the color frame to make sure there's not, there's not that much visible on here. Okay. So first thing we're going to look at is the brightness. Now obviously you see it looks a little bit too dim, honestly. But if I go to here, and I obviously am so crazy to do this. If I am, if I change it from personal to standard. It is the exact same way. But if I change it to sports, you kind of see it. Now, the reason this is, is because the fact is that for some reason, there's some sort of like other settings on here that are messing with the thing, aka other picture visualizers on this. Since I don't have the remote control, I really can't change that right now, but honestly, once I get the remote to this, I'll be able to fix this pretty easily, since then I can turn off the contrast and hands and stuff. Okay, now the next thing that we are looking at is color accuracy. Now on the camera, it really doesn't do, do much with this, but as you can kind of see, the red to me looks red, blue looks, I mean the red to me looks slightly orange, but the blue looks okay, and the green doesn't really look as bright as it could be, but again, if I was able to get into like the service menu, which I need to remote control to do that, then I'll be able to fix those options. And fix the picture up and make it look better. I see. So... Okay. So, no, I'm not. Not looking to I just want to... Like, because I've done this with three TVs already. Have I? Is the recommendation like messed up with like all? Oh, but those disco lights out here. Okay, so disco lights. I don't need five hundred hours of disco lights because that's just gonna flash random colors on the screen. I don't need that. <laughs> I, I don't need colors on the screen right now. Okay. So anyway. Now, gonna just turn the lights back on, and then we are gonna power off the TV, and I'll give you my opinion on this. Okay. Now, let me just unplug the Moku, and we're gonna unplug the TV. We're gonna see what we got going on after this. Here. Okay. Move the TV over a little bit. What do I have to? What do I have to say about this TV before I do the review? Well, back then when I first got like seen these Sylvanias, they were not really my favorite. Like I wasn't really fond of them, and the reason why is because whenever I saw them, it had like such horrible color accuracy. Probably because these are the cheapest TVs out there back then, but they don't really make them anymore. And it's kind of like all food eye TVs that I saw that had like horrible color accuracy. The Sylvania CRTs were okay. That's if they, that's if I, you ever see them. But all the like food eye sets, like the Sylvania and all the other ones are made by food eye. I think Magnavox was one of them and I think some of the others. 
they, I wasn't really fond of them. And with all the years I've seen these, I've actually kind of started to get a little bit more used to them. So, because of that, I, once I figure out how to change all the settings on all these TVs, because the default settings on these videos are horrible, once I got the hate of changing the settings on these TVs, I got a lot more, I actually started to like these videos a little bit more. I mean, now, let's go ahead and skip over to the review mode. Because that's probably what you're all waiting for. So what would be all yours rate on this TV? I'll actually give it like a 7 out of 10. And the reason being is because the fact is that this TV doesn't have the best sound. It doesn't have the best picture, but again, it's a lot better than it was by default. <laughs> the gaming performance is actually really good. <laughs> being that it's really small. <laughs> I could try with it if I ever wanted to. <laughs> And videos on it seem to do okay. But forget about all that. The main reason I have this is because I'm going to use it as a PC monitor. Yep, I replaced that old 4x3 Dell from 2006 I have. <laughs> so this is going to be the PC monitor that you're going to see in my videos from now on. <laughs> so I'm not even going to use it as a TV really. And this is, of course, my first time I play video games on it, but that's entirely different. <laughs> or unless I need, like, a tiny little TV. But, again, if I need a small TV, I have that Samsung. <laughs> so, this one's even smaller than Samsung, but if I need one with a digital tuner, I'll go for this one. <laughs> anyway. And if I travel, I have the Dynex. I don't need this one if I travel. <gasps> anyway. <laughs> so... That will probably be in the uh, end of this video. You're probably going to see this TV again in the future with my PCs. And anyway, I'll see you in the next one. So, bye. And remember, peace out, everyone.